Welcome back everyone. So today is a special day. Today we're going to fix the 36 screw now. Um, this radio, um, I actually, I think I did a video on this before. Um, <clears throat> yes, it could use uh, a good refinish, um, but we're not going to do that today. Now what we got to do here is, uh, I've got a control knob. It's the band selector. And what's happening is there's a loose contact somewhere in that control rack. And you should see it. It is it is it is enormous. Um, the the switch is like probably ten inches long. <laughs> All different racks of switches and contacts. One of them is loose. And what's happening is or loose or 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 something's going on with it. So what we gotta do is we gotta pull the chassis out of the radio and set it up here on the table somehow and manipulate with a plastic black stick um, each and every contact on that switch and figure out which one's causing this radio to, to malfunction. So what would happen is it would play great, sounds awesome, and all of a sudden it would cut out. And then you, you tap the floor a little bit and then it comes back a little bit. Or what I've been doing is I just jiggle the knob and it comes back. Um, but that's not acceptable. Um, you know, because if you're playing music, you want it to just run uninterrupted. At least that's my my, my whole uh, theory. So what we got to do is we got to pull this thing apart. I'm going to clear off this table, put something down to protect the table, and uh, and we will um, try to fix it. Before we dive into that, I've had a very busy week. I took this week off of work because I more or less had to. Um, our vacation policy at work is use it or lose it after the fiscal year, but they extended mine by a month or two or three, and it's finally at the drop dead date where if I don't use my vacation time, I don't get to, you know. And we don't get paid for unused vacation time. It's kind of an arcane policy, but that's just how it is. Um, so I took the week off to get house projects done, and one of the things I did was I refinished this table. It was... Um, Originally, it was uh, kind of like a, a matte finish, um, like a, or maybe it was, it was like a semi-gloss, um, natural wood finish, the whole thing, except the chairs. The chairs were always white with natural wood seats. So I painted the table base. That's actually pure white. That's an untinted white paint right there. And I used an oil-based enamel that I have. Um, I bought it for a different project, but never never used it. So oil-based paint is great for furniture because it's very durable and very cleanable. And I sanded the top, which was pretty ratty looking. The top was, was actually really bad, um, but I sanded it down and I put a nice uh, coating of um, polyurethane. Now I put it on too thick. So um, I'm going to have to, well, I'm going to let it cure for a couple more days. They say 72 hours. Then I'm going to give it a nice light sanding. Um, there's wrinkles everywhere. And uh, yeah, that, that's because it went on too thick. And um, yeah, there's wrinkles galore. I might leave it alone, honestly, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to definitely try to fix it. So I'll give it a nice light uh, sanding with 220 grit and then put one final coat on it. Um, the thing is with pecan polyurethane, the, the tinted uh, poly shades product, you, you the thicker it is, the darker it gets. And this is kind of the shade I wanted. But I put it on too thick too fast and it just um Yeah, it kinda got a little mottled there. But I also painted the chairs and I gave the seats a nice coating of the same uh, pecan gloss poly. And uh I didn't bother sanding the seats, I just threw it on there. I paid $50 for this dining set on Craigslist. And um, I think I got a pretty good deal. I bought it, it was the, um, I needed a dining room set and I needed it quick because I had just bought this house in November of 2018 and I had no furniture. So I'm like, well, let's see what I can get on Craigslist. And this popped up and I'm like, I'll take it. They wanted 75, I bargained them down to 50. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job bargaining. I mean, look at this thing. It looks beautiful. I mean, really, besides aside from the, the, the wrinkles, which I will fix, it looks pretty good. And it looks good in this room. 
because we painted the walls um, in this section blue and uh, then that section there they're burgundy I love it I'm very happy with it um, but any hoozles let's get that radio apart all right okay so we've got the unit pulled away from the wall um, I'm gonna have to pull the, the knobs off I just realized I have the wrong screwdriver for that I gotta pull the dial plate off uh, if any of you have one of these uh, in parts somewhere and you have any of these dial plate screws, please hit me up. I am looking for four of these. Two, one, two. I'm looking for two. I'm missing two dial plate screws. They're a special screw and I can't seem to find anyone who, anybody who has any. Oh yeah, so a little... Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a previous video or not, but I was having issues with um, audio buzz. Like, the, all of a sudden, it would produce a loud buzzing sound. And um, it turned out to be an issue with the volume control rheostat. And, uh, well, in my troubleshooting, I replaced the two audio tubes, the 6L6s. And I bought two um, reflector tubes from Russia, and I put those in in the audio amp circuit, and um, they sounded pretty good, but they didn't solve the problem. So I put the six uh, L sixes back in the original. Oh, oh the um, I think these are RCAs. I put those back in, and it's been fine ever since. But I just thought I would mention that. All right, so. Because this unit requires the speaker to be connected while I'm troubleshooting, I had to move the cabinet over to the table, so that's why we did that. So let me let me get let me get this thing apart. Oh, I see my DIY chassis mounts are doing okay. Um, so move the chassis out. This thing, I, I have to tell you, this thing smells awful. Well, it smells like. A forest floor. At some point, this unit was probably stored in a very damp location, and it has taken on mildew, mold, or something. And occasionally, on humid summer days, the living room would it would just start to radiate from. Ugh, I got to figure out a solution for that. And if anybody knows any ideas, I mean. Seriously, this thing smells so bad um, of just rotting wood. Anyway, here's our chassis. Now, I want to start off by saying there was a YouTuber, or a viewer, sorry, who made the suggestion that there's supposed to be more than one lamp in this chassis. And I, I would love to know what you're talking about because I only see one lamp socket completely one only one only one lamp socket and I don't see provisions for another one anywhere in here so if you um could elaborate on what you're talking about one of my viewers a long time ago but I think it was in the last video or the first video I made of this of this unit had made that suggestion that there's supposed to be two lamps in this style. Um, I don't see where that's supposed to go. So if you could please let me know. Um, <laughs> I would love to know. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong, believe me. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, I don't have another lamp socket. I see wiring for one socket and one socket only. But if there's supposed to be two or more, please Please elaborate and say, yeah, that's where it goes. And I'll be like, okay, thank you, sir. May I have another? Okay, where's our problem? So, I've already done this. I've took, I took this uh, power switch apart. And I replaced the wiring that goes to it because the wiring was in pretty rough shape. So I put this period correct vinyl coated <laughs> wire in there. No, really though, it was it was kind of a, it was kind of it was it was it was not good. Um, 
I took the switch apart and I cleaned the contacts with my favorite contact cleaner. It's um, Deoxit D100. This stuff, I'm telling you right now, this stuff has saved me so much in irreplaceable electronic items. Um, my father's stereo, for example. Um, if it wasn't for D100, I would not have been able to salvage it. Um, there's just no way. And that was a priceless um, piece of uh, electronics history. Um, but I used it to save my volume pot because it was crackling really badly. So let's turn this thing on. See if we can get it to tune into anything. I got the speaker plugged in over here. Remember, this is a lot of this is live. Like straight 120 volt live. Actually, no, the transformer is over here. So, But there are some 120 volt circuitry up in the switch area because that actually runs all the way over. Yeah, see, see that's the wire I replaced. That guy. So, all right, let's see if we can get it to tune into anything. This is our, our this is our offending switch right here. This is the AM band. Somewhere in this rack of switches. Okay. Just gonna prod and poke. There's a problem. And you know what? I think it's a short circuit. What is that thing? Is this wire right here? This wire is shorting out against this post here. That's the problem. Let's take a let's take a good look at it and see what's happening. I'm gonna unplug it first. All right. So if I'm right, there should be a wear mark right through this wire insulation. Oh, look at this! A broken solder joint. So let's let's take it out and see if there's any short circuit. It's entirely possible. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run some, um, I'm going to put some, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just, I'm just going to solder this back in. This was the problem all along. We'll put it back. I'm going to grab my soldering iron. We're going to fix it. Okay. I think we got it. I resolder that wire. Let's get her fired up. One thing I've noticed about the AM brought the AM band, especially in this area, is that it was overtaken by right wing radio. When did that happen? Does anybody know? Has it always been that way? Seriously, every AM station I can find is all right wing radio. And it's not like soft right, it's like hard right. Why is that? Maybe they know their target audience. Oh. Anyway, 
bacteria, and viruses. Balance of Nature provides you with some vegetables. This is our shortwave band, I believe. Of course, I don't have a much of an antenna hooked up to it, but... Not that I expected to grab anything on that band. I'm going to let it warm up a bit, and then we're going to poke and prod and see if we can find another one. But I think that fixed the problem. Where's my, uh, where's my prod and stick? Where's Daddy's prod and stick? I'm going to find it. You know? The answer is yes, of course. It's a religious test I think we're good. You may not apply a religious test to any office, which would include the Supreme Court. It's, it's in black and white. It's been there since... Everything the seems to be of. pretty good. That was our only problem right there. So, the thing is, this, this radio was never quite finished by the gentleman who was restoring it. He, he got it to a state of functionality, but he never really finished it. And that's why I've had so many problems with this unit. Um, it didn't get the fine tooth comb treatment because he had other things that he had to work on and other projects on his plate and this was kind of like a little side deal and um, it never really got completed so that's why we're having you know all these little problems where normally we wouldn't and um, you know I really wish I could find a locally sourced power cord for this thing because this is not long enough unfortunately this is all I got so and he actually left the factory tag on there this is not the original cord obviously this is something he he put together um, but I would like to change the power cord in this in this unit I really would um, but I don't want to pull it all back apart again order something I just wish I could go to a local store and find what I need but Nobody carries what I want. So I might have to just put a rubber cord on this unit. A nice long one. This is way too short. I mean, come on. This is not long enough. So I'm going to try to find something in my own pile of, uh, of, of magic goodies. Because um, it needs a longer cord. I'm actually thinking about robbing the cord from that phonograph over there. Because that I don't really care too much about in terms of... <laughs> I mean, the cord that's on there, I mean, I care about that, but um, it doesn't need to be on there um, for the light. I've never used the light, um, but it's a gold-colored cord. It would look nice on this radio. Um, 1937, it would have had a cloth cord for sure, probably black, but I don't, know, I don't have a black cord. I should just buy a couple feet of the stuff just to have on hand. But any hoozles, this is what we got. Um, it is missing the bottom tray. As, uh, as, uh, no one's pointed that out yet, but um, but it's, it's, it's factual. There's supposed to be a supporting tray for this. This screws into the tray, and that is all missing. Um, it looks like no, it may not be a complete tray, but just a piece of metal that com that covers this tuning section. Um, that's what it looks like. And I might have to make something in the basement. That could be a fun project. Make, make a new tuning coil support bracket. The sad part is that part is probably still, uh, it, it was still around um, when the gentleman had passed away. Um, but it probably got shuffled in with a bunch of other junk that was discarded. Um, so... Yeah, it's unfortunate. These things happen, though, you know. Always finish your projects before you die. That's the moral. Always make sure you know when you're going to die, and make sure you plan you plan accordingly and finish every project you've got in your plate. Just get it done. That way, <laughs> that way it doesn't become somebody else's problem. No, it's 
not a very nice thing to say, but if anybody has a, a parts chassis and you've got those screws and you've got this cover, I would love to hear from you because I really do want to put this thing back together right. Um, but this is what I got. Now these chassis mounts, by the way, these are crap. Um, these are all garbage, but I can't get new ones. And they're built in such a way where they can't be disassembled cleanly and then repacked with rubber and then put back together again. They're just kind of a one-shot deal. So I've had to make my own standoffs, which are a pain in the ass to put on because they keep separating. And, uh, you know, and the world turns. But the radio still works. Everything is working fine. I think I found the problem. I think we're good. Now let's put it back together. So I just gave it a little bit of Watco rejuvenating oil. Um, you apply it with steel wool and uh, let it sit for a little bit. It polymerizes, I guess, a little, little bit, and then you buff it off. Um, you know, the finish on this radio is... Actually, it's pretty good in some spots, but um, the face is faded. You can see where the color is basically absent from here down but fine from here up. I, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it alone. You know, give it, gives it patina. That's, uh, my girlfriend, you know, this is, this is, she made these out of toilet paper rolls. <laughs> hey, she likes it, whatever. I'll, um, let her have her fun. Anyway, uh, let's see what we got. Let's see if we can get propaganda 101. There we go. And tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, federal look at that. judge says the census will keep going through the... You know what? You know, it's kind of a mind trip when you realize what this radio has gone through over the past 84 years or so. Um, it was built in 37, 36, 36. And since then we've had World War II. So this was probably used um, to update its owner on the ongoings of World War II. It went through, um, you know, the Korean War, of course. Um, you know, this house was built during the Korean War era. So this radio, you know, it was, it was um, whatever news that it received was basically the, the rise of, of middle class America. And, you know, when it hit its peak in the 1960s and then the decline of middle class America from there. But the Vietnam War, the Korean War, um, you know, if in theory, if this was an operational set up until like Desert Storm or so, which I don't think is the case, but you just think of all the historical events that this radio has received and trans and and and, and, uh, and reproduced, sound-wise, um, the Hindenburg disaster. I mean, seriously, 19, that happened in '36, I believe, and um, depending on when or when this radio was produced, it could have actually played the Hindenburg uh, disaster of 36. Um, just crazy. The amount, and now, just now, you just heard it, it was broadcasting, of course, the quality of news has declined since then, but um, the events of the coronavirus, which is one of the first global health crises since uh, the Spanish flu of 1918. Um, so we're kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of um, connecting this radio to historical events throughout its life. It's like that family member that just won't die. <laughs> I lived through the... Well, actually, I'm trying to think. Somebody lived through the 1918 uh, Spanish flu, then they would be well over 100 years old by now. To be old enough to remember what happened. Well, anyway... I uh, don't mean to go too far into the woods there, um, but yeah. So this this radio is going to live another day. We found the problem. Changing the world one life at a time. And uh, the products are great, absolutely. You know, general aches and pains. Yeah, tighten that up a little bit. 
on. It's uh, it's almost magic. It's almost too hard yeah. to too good to be. So the problem solved. This radio now works perfectly. So we had a couple of problems with it before, and we've and I fixed every one of them. And it was all mostly just either loose wire. Uh, we had a wire that was wearing through in one point. I think it was one of the power wires, um, which is why I replaced it. I believe it was wearing through on one spot, and um, so we, we replaced that. We had. Um, the volume control knob, which is also the on-off switch, that was very... What was happening was um, it was creating a, a buzzing, a full volume buzz. Like, com like they would shake the house. It was so bad. Um, so there was something going on in there. We cleaned that out. We flushed it out with this stuff and solved that problem. Um, I thought, see, uh, my initial reaction was, oh, it could be a bad uh, amplifier tube. You know, maybe the, the tube is something going on inside there in one of them. Because what I found was when I removed one of the, see, this will run on one amplifier tube. You can take one out, it will still go. Um, when I took one tube out, it was running fine, just at half volume. And um, so I'm thinking, oh, that's what the problem is. So I'd put another tube in I put two brand new tubes in it and it was still doing it. Turns out that's what it was all along. So I think we got it nailed. I haven't tried receiving any shortwave signals from this radio because I just don't want to set up a shortwave antenna. Um, but, so I, I, but I do know that it works. I've actually heard it play shortwave before uh, when the previous owner who fixed it now, when he got it running, he actually he, he went through everything. and he, he But what he did not do, as I mentioned earlier, he did not do the fine-tooth comb, you know, <clears throat> just tying up loose ends. And he didn't get that far with it. He was unfortunately killed before he got to that point. So that was really, unf really, really sad. But um, I think I have it to a point where it's pretty stable. And it will um, it will continue to provide years and years of entertainment joy, as long as the AM band is still going in the U.S. and even when it's not. The one thing I want to do with this radio, there is a um, there is an an auxiliary jack on the back for a phonograph, and I'm thinking about using that to kind of future proof the unit. I want to set up a Bluetooth receiver that can output a signal weak enough or, or, or a, 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 yeah, a weak enough signal that, can, that won't overpower the preamp on this unit. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I actually have to set up something to, to test that, to see if that even works at all. Um, so we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, and I don't even, I think it, I, I'm not sure if that jack takes over the receiver or not. But I'm thinking if I plug something into that jack, it's going to cut out the receiver entirely. So you would have to manually, because there's no auxiliary, there's no aux um, position on the band selector on this. So anyway, well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. And I got to clean up the living room before the lady of the house comes home and tears me a new one because <laughs> she just cleaned the living room and, and now look what I did to it. But I think I will win her over with this table, um, for sure. Once I get that final coat on there, I'm going to sand it smooth. Not to the wood, but sand it smooth. And uh, give it one more blast of poly. I think it'll be, it'll be, one, it'll be one, uh, one bitchin' table. This table reminds me of a table that we had growing up. Uh, this table was probably made in the late 90s, mid to late 90s or so. This was a very popular style for kitchen tables back then. This was pretty much the de facto kitchen table of the 90s. Um, and even in the, I think, well, in the late 80s as well. Um, it was a very simple, kind of country-ass looking thing. Um, but when I was growing up, a lot of people I knew had tables just like this. Uh, the one that my parents had was identical, except it had a tile top surface. Uh, some of you, some of you folks who grew up in the in the '90s might remember those. They were very popular for a long time. Um, it was 
same table, essentially. The difference being um, it didn't have a solid oak top. It just had an oak rim and uh, like a particle board base or um, kind of like an underlayment. But it had white tiles, 4x4 four four tiles all over the top surface. We didn't really like that table because, well, I didn't like it because I couldn't draw on it. Um, I couldn't draw anything because it was the fucking tile top surface. So you couldn't, like, color and, yeah, it was, you couldn't do homework on it because you'd have to put something down first. It was a terrible table, actually, in hindsight. I'm glad that table's gone. <laughs> anyway. I really like this one though. Uh, now that it's now that it looks nice, I like it. Uh, before it was like, yeah, it was a table. It provided you know a flat surface for us to consume our caloric intake um, sessions. Um, but that was all it was. I mean, it was just it, it looked pretty bad. It was kind of hideous. Um, but now, now I like it. I'm actually falling in love with this table all over again. Um, not that I really liked it to begin with it was just it was a cheap table it did the job pretty sturdy though i mean you know for a you know, for a cheap table um to replace this table right now brand new would cost us around 900 bucks so kind of a no-brainer fix what you got you know what i'm saying fix what you got